In this video, we are going to be looking at how our body controls blood, blood pressure. And the two main systems we're going to be outlining today is short-term blood pressure regulation and long-term blood pressure regulation. So beginning with short-term uh, regulation, term regulation. So our body, uh, or our brain, I should say, actually receives several signals in order to send signals back to change blood pressure. So the center responsible for receiving signals and sending out signals to control our entire cardiovascular system, really, is called the cardiovascular center in the brain. You can see here, you can also shorten it as CVC. So our CVC receives signals... receives signals from three main factors. So the first of those are baroreceptors. Baroreceptors. And baroreceptors are a type of nerve or sensory tissue that is found in the carotid arteries. And carotid arteries are just these arter arteries in our neck supplying our brain. They're found in the artery, and essentially what they do is they can detect changes in blood pressure in that vessel. So they detect blood pressure. So they detect blood pressure, right? And when they actually detect the blood pressure, they're able to send a signal to the cardiovascular center. Next, we have chemoreceptors. And chemoreceptors are also found on, in the carotid arteries. And they detect changes in chemicals. And there's a lot of uh, chemicals that it detects changes in, chemicals in the blood, that is. But the main changes it detects are changes in oxygen, carbon dioxide, and changes in acidity. And then, last but not least, we have the higher centers in the brain. Higher centers in the brain. Now, essentially, what these centers do is, there's a lot of them, but the brain is actually sending signals back to the cardiovascular center. And the reason for this is because we can have uh, changes from emotions, such as fear or pain or anxiety. So emotion. Or it could be our hypothalamus, which is responsible for controlling temperature. And one main way we do that, controlling skin temperature, is by dilating or constricting blood vessels. So temperature from the hypothalamus. So that's our, in general, that's our short-term regulation, and with this diagram, I'm going to be explaining just exactly how that actually happens. So, so we start with the brain. We have the higher centers and the cardiovascular center. This is our heart. We can see this is the arch of the aorta, and these are our carotid arteries here. And right here, I've just drawn a blood vessel. So... We can split this diagram into two sections, the section where we send signals to the brain and the section where the brain sends signals back in order to actually change the blood pressure, and that's the point of this video. So just to make things easier, we'll start out with how exactly uh, these systems, as we've mentioned before, send signals to the brain. So first, let's start with the baroreceptors. Actually, I'll just change color for this quickly. So we start with our baroreceptors, right? And those are found right here in the carotid artery. And these detect changes in blood pressure. So, detect pressure, as we've outlined here before, right? So these baroreceptors, they detect a change in pressure. 
and essentially that signals go those signals go to the cardiovascular center so I'll just draw an arrow to represent that so the baroreceptors detect pressure but as we know before there's also something else in the carotid arteries and those are the chemoreceptors chemoreceptors detect changes in chemicals in the blood and those also send a signal to the cardiovascular center and finally we also have incoming signals from the higher centers in the brain in order to control things as we've mentioned before like temperature or due to states of emotion so those are our main signals going to the cardiovascular center. And the cardiovascular center is going to be able to receive these signals or impulses and do something with them in order to control our blood pressure. So, switching back to another color here, now our cardiovascular center has to use these to control the blood pressure. So first, what it'll do is it'll actually impact the heart here. So it'll send out parasympathetic or sympathetic activity in order to change the heart um, heart rate and stroke volume. So I'll just draw a line here. So it'll change your heart rate and stroke volume. So it'll change the heart rate or stroke volume, right? And the cardiovascular center will also do something else. It'll affect the blood vessels. So based on if it sends what type of signal it sends, it'll change the blood vessel in order to constrict it or dilate it. And that's called vasoconstriction. So I'll just draw another line here. So vaso constriction or vasodilation. So vasodilation is when the smooth muscle and the tunica media relaxes and the blood vessel dilates or it widens. And vasoconstriction is when the tunica media and the smooth muscle in it contracts uh, and the diameter of a blood vessel decreases. So essentially that's our short-term regulation so if our baroreceptors and chemoreceptors will only really influence this entire system if there's some sort of uh, pulmonary uh, disorder or dysfunction, but if our baroreceptors detect very high pressure, the body is going to want to lower the pressure. And the way the body does that is we know that the formula for pressure, the formula for pressure, and this is important, formula for blood pressure, I should say. Blood pressure equals cardiac output times peripheral resistance, or in this case, we can just say vasoconstriction. So how much our blood vessels are constricting. So Cardiac output essentially means how hard and how much blood our blood is, uh, heart is pumping out. And vasoconstriction means, or peripheral resistance, means how much resistance the blood vessel is putting on the blood inside of it, or how much it's constricting. So our baroreceptors might detect a high pressure and they want to lower the blood pressure in the body, right? So the way they'll do this is it'll send a signal to the cardiovascular system. And the cardiovascular system to lower blood pressure will send out parasympathetic activity to the heart. Parasympathetic activity in the heart will affect certain uh, nerves that slow down the impulses. And because these impulses are slowed down, the heart rate is also slowed down, and the heart starts beating with less pressure or force. So all of a sudden, our cardiac output is decreased, meaning our blood pressure is decreased, which is good because our baroreceptors detected high pressure. <laughs> Now, the cardiovascular system will also decrease sympathetic activity in the blood vessels, and this will cause them to dilate and relax, which also uh, decreases our vasoconstriction. So when our baroreceptors send a signal to the cardiovascular system, that's what it does. 
However, if our beta receptors don't really receive a sig um, impulse, meaning they don't detect a very high blood pressure, they detect a low pressure, what they'll do is they'll send a signal to the cardiovascular system again, and the CVC will actually say, okay, this time in the heart we're going to be increasing the sympathetic activity, so that way our heart rate and stroke volume goes up, so this cardiac output goes up, and we're also going to constrict these blood vessels by increasing the sympathetic activity in them, which in increases our blood pressure. So that's, your body is actually constantly doing that to make sure that your short-term blood pressure is within a good range. And now just moving on to long-term regulation. So moving on to long-term regulation, there's a few different factors that actually affect this. Uh, the main ones are a few hormones, and they're known as RAAS and ADH. And essentially, these hormones control blood volume. And because they control blood volume, they control cardiac output because the formula for cardiac output is the amount of uh, blood that's in our heart and how hard our heart can pump. So the more blood we have, the more cardiac output we have, meaning the more blood pressure we have. So automatically, those are two things that affect long-term regulation, meaning they increase blood pressure in the long term. And another hormone we have is called ANP, and it's actually a hormone released by the heart. And ANP, what it will do is it'll cause sodium and water loss in the kidneys. And I'll draw an arrow down in the kidneys. And because of this, what it'll actually what will actually happen is uh, this reduces blood pressure since the kidney has such a huge role in filtering blood it'll reduce blood pressure and oppose the activity of this. So in short, that's how we can control blood pressure. Our body is constantly using these short-term regulation systems in order to make sure that our blood pressure is within healthy ranges. And we also have a few factors that determine our blood pressure in the long term. <laughs>